Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Rachel Davis and if you don't already know, the purpose of this YouTube channel is to share my experience as a personal trainer throughout the last eight years. I have done everything. I've worked everywhere um, in all different sorts of gyms. I've done my own thing. I've worked as an employee. I've worked the front desk. I've managed gyms. You name it, I've done it. So I want to share my experience with new trainers or trainers who are trying to make some sort of change in their career. So today's video, as promised, is let's see how many. One, two, three, four of the biggest mistakes I made during my first year of business and how I corrected them. So it's been over one year since I left my job at a franchised gym. I was the manager, I guess you can call it. I'm putting that in heavy quotes, but I was managing a gym and then um, I didn't like that. So I took over as the head trainer and I managed the personal training program. I didn't go back and I decided to finally 100% go off on my own, start my own business. I'd always been doing it on the side, but I thought now is the time. So I was, it was like a really quick thing. Like I got to go and start this and make money. So I got all my clients together and they were either literally coming into this room I'm talking in now, which is my office slash sitting room. Like it's the second you walk in, um, they either came here and worked out or I went to their homes. So uh, during that process, I was figuring out whether I wanted to build my own gym or rent commercial space. And I decided to build a gym onto my home that could double as um, like a full home addition. So all I had to do was take out a loan to build the gym slash addition. And then when I sell my house, I can get some of that investment back because it adds to the property. It adds to the square footage. Anyway... I have been in business a little over one year and I have made a lot of mistakes along the way and I'm glad because I'm learning how to become more of a businesswoman and get a thicker skin for the business because it's not easy um, and I'm just trying to find the best way to handle things. So let's start with number one. So I wrote these all down so I wouldn't forget. Number one, and I know so many trainers do this, whether you're just starting your own business or whether you're just starting as a trainer completely are um, making your prices too low. You're going to want to do it. You're going to justify the heck out of it, making your prices too low. You're going to regret it. Okay. I can almost guarantee you're going to make your prices super duper duper low to compare, compete with other gyms, to try to get them to come with you. And then before you know it, it a month later, you're going to regret it. Um, that's what I did. Most of my clients have kind of weeded themselves out, but I gradually have raised my prices over the year to now where I'm like higher end. I don't want to say high ticket. I hate that. I'm not a high ticket trainer whatsoever and I don't advocate for that, but um, I'm comparable to more of the pricier gyms in the area. However, I do have some clients who are still with me and they've been with me since the beginning. So they're at like this super duper low rate, which is um, almost more than half of what I charge. So they're paying... Um, yeah, yeah. Cut that in half. They're paying that. I would never raise my prices on my clients. I feel like that is almost a punishment for being so loyal and staying with me throughout this time. So now I have some clients who I'm even traveling to and they're paying a super low price. But again, I would never raise my price on a client as long as they've stayed with me. Now, if they left and they come back, that's a different story. But anyone who's been loyal and stuck with me from the beginning would never do that to them. And I can't justify that with getting more continuing education credits, building a gym. Like, I'm not justifying any of that. So with that being said, 
um, if you're a very integral person, um, you need to not make your prices too low, okay, no matter what. Whatever you wanna start with, add $10 to that session, okay? And you can always raise your prices as you go. So whatever you feel like starting with, add $10 to that session. Let's start there and move on. Again, because if you're like me and you don't wanna raise uh, prices on clients, which you shouldn't, um, don't start too low. All right, the next one. I was being cheap with billing and I was trying to be laid back with billing. Like we could do whatever is comfortable for you. You want a pay per session, you want to buy sessions, whatever. Um, and I was being, I was trying to save money and be cheap. So it's like, you know, if you use um, an automated billing system like Stripe or if you go through Trainerize Pay or PayPal subscription, um, they charge you a fee. And at first I thought, well, I don't want to do this. Let's just do Venmo. Let's just do, you write me a check. Let's just do, um, PayPal friends and family that I don't get the fee taken out. With all of that, there is no accountability. So now that I know what I know, I have lost way more money than I would have spent in fees. Every single one of my clients is on auto bill and they can choose if they want to be billed weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, and that is it. You can pick once, twice, three times a week. Let's say you pick um, twice a week. It's four twenty a month. Then you can pay it however you want. It can come out automatically, weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, but it's coming out automatically. There is no pay-as-you-go. Um, it is auto-drafted. Okay. With that being said, I also didn't have a cancellation policy. I, again, tend to be a very laid back sort of person. I want this to be like a family experience. Like this is in my home. Um, so I think people were taking advantage of the fact that like, yeah, it's in my home. So it's very like, she's here anyway. It doesn't matter if I cancel. So I never had like a rigid, strict cancellation policy and I would never have clients lose their sessions. So before you start, you need a strict cancellation policy in place and you need to stick with it. If they call you in the morning and they're sick and they literally can't come, you can say, okay, but this is your one for the month. Otherwise they'll keep doing it again. So 24 hours, 12 hours, whatever you want to do, you need something in place. You need something in writing for them to see and to hold, and you need to have them sign it. Okay. Cause I've lost again, so much money allowing people to pay cash and just allowing, it was a free for all. It was whatever they wanted. I wanted them to just want to come to me so bad. I'm like, let's do whatever you do. It's all about you, but this is a business. Um, Okay, another one, saying yes to every single client and clients that I knew were gonna be bad clients. Like you've had those clients who have said they're gonna meet with you for a consultation and they've canceled on you three times and then you hope that this fourth time will be the time that sticks and then it does and you say yes and then they're making your life a living hell. Okay, so you are gonna know, you're gonna have a feeling right off the bat, whether this is gonna be a good client or a bad client. If you're not desperate for clients, you do not have to say yes to every client. I finally learned to say no. I am fully booked. I'm not fully, fully booked. I can book some more people and I don't want to. I want a life, I wanna spend time with my son and I don't wanna burn out. Cause burnouts lead to, can lead to very bad habits. Um, and it could, it could ruin your career. It can stop you from wanting to be a trainer. So stop saying yes to everyone. You don't need to. Um, second to last one is not investing the money in the right places or the right times. Um, you need to spend money to make money. 
If you want this to be a legitimate business, then you need to treat it as such. So you need to figure out what's the best investment you can make that's not going to return money right away. It's going to help your business grow over time. So I would look into a business coach. I would look into some sort of consultant to help you get started. Um, I would just sit down and start making a list of, you know, what are you comfortable in investing in? And if you're not, in, you're not comfortable in investing in anything, like you literally want to go the cheapest route. I'm going to be like really brutally honest with you. Like if you're trying to be super cheap and try to do everything for free, try to get every free app, not get any advice, not pay for any sort of coaching yourself, then you may not make it. Okay. So not investing enough. Um, how I fixed that mistake was I finally hired a business coach. Now, do you need a business coach? I don't know. Um, they're a big investment. Um, you can get a consultant. It's actually something I'm starting to do. It's a one session sort of thing. And I tell you everything you need to know to start your business, your home gym from, um, building your business entity? Do you need an LLC? Do you need a sole proprietor? How to get started and find the right accountant? How to get the zoning laws covered to make sure you can have it? How to get your banking account setting up? So there's a couple different ways you can go. And then the last one, I wasn't setting boundaries. Uh, it was a free for all. It was a free for all for my clients. I told them if they had to cancel, come when you can. And that made my life miserable. And I was too uncomfortable to have that talk until it got to the point where I needed to have that talk. And they were 100% understanding. They said, why haven't you had this talk with us in the beginning? So as a personal trainer, you know, our clients do invest and pay a lot of money. So you want to really be able to cater to them and their needs and like that was like my thing. I'm like, my thing is being extremely flexible and catering to you, your time, um, your, your budget, your goals. It's all about you. It's all about you. And like, they, they took that to heart. They're like, it is all about me. I'm very inconsiderate of your time. It's all about me. So set very clear boundaries in the beginning. With that being said, um, if you're watching this video, maybe it means you're starting your own venture. So I'm really excited for you. Best of luck. You can always reach out to me if you need help or have any questions. So I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you next time. Have a great day.